So, uh, hi, I'm Akshay Degrekar. Um, this is structure versus hardness through the obfuscation lens. It is joint work with Neil Bitansky and Vinod Vaikunthanathan. So very structured algebraic problems like discrete log are the bread and butter of cryptography. Most of our modern cryptography, especially the public key kind, is based on these problems. And in this talk we would like to understand is this uh, inherent. Right. So first of all we know that this structure, algebraic structure is great for functionality. Um, in, Moreover, we could say that this structure has been pivotal in getting cryptography in the development of cryptography itself. For example, uh, public key encryption really became possible uh, when we assumed the hardness of uh, these number theoretic problems like factoring. Uh, similarly, the first zero knowledge proofs we had were for quadratic residuosity. And the, more recently as we have assumed uh, hardness of problems on lattices and so on, we have a host of fantastic new applications such as uh, fully homomorphic encryption. Okay. So it is evident that this structure is great for functionality but it does not come for free because structured, algebraically structured problems are a bit more easier to solve. And this gives us a trade off between hard problems on one end, uh, between hardness and algebraic structure. On one end we have SAT, so SAT is extremely hard. At the same time it is very unstructured. Unfortunately we don't know how to base any crypto on the hardness of SAT alone. Then we have assumptions in Minicrypt, so these have somewhat more structure. And finally we come to cryptomania which is what we would be interested in this talk. Most of the, so these consists of primitives of the public key kind. So, most of these are based on a handful of assumptions such as QR, DDH and so on. All these assumptions are extremely algebraic. It turns out that we know some surprising quantum and sub-exponential time algorithms for these problems. So these problems are easier in a different sense as well, that they are unlikely to be NP complete. And the reason is because they lie in these lower, more structured complexity classes like NP intersect co NP and SDK. So for now, think, so SDK is the class, class of problems that have statistical zero knowledge proofs. For now think of it as a small complexity class, I will define it later. Okay. Right. So the first natural question here is how do we go about capturing this algebraic structure? In this talk we make the choice that uh, structure is uh, equated with a hardness in low complexity classes. Okay. So why is this a good idea? So first of all we know that most of our assumptions actually lie in these two classes. Moreover they lie in these classes because they have some deep global properties. For example factoring lies in NP intersect co NP because factoring is unique and quadratic residuosity lies in a ZK because of its random self reducibility. So we do actually want to capture these kinds of properties. And finally we know that some of this structure actually implies crypto. Uh, Ostrovsky showed that uh, any average case hard language in a ZK actually implies one way functions. So we do want to understand these connections better, maybe they are tighter. Okay. So, Right, so this brings us to the main question of this talk, like does crypto actually require these structured assumptions? So sometimes it turns out that the answer is yes. For in some cases the cryptographic primitives themselves imply hard problems in these classes. In which case the fact that the assumptions have to be structured is very natural. For example, fully homomorphic encryption implies hard problems in a ZK. And some very special kinds of public key encryption schemes and one-way functions also imply hard problems in NP intersect co NP. But this is quite, this is not understood very well. Uh, let's take the case of public key encryption. So we don't actually know if public key encryption implies hard problems in these classes. Given that public key encryption is usually based on assumptions which imply hard problems in these classes, it would seem the case but we don't actually know. Uh, similarly the case for other primitives like functional encryption, oblivious transfer, IO and so on. Okay. So uh, this is the main question of this talk, which cryptographic primitives require complexity theoretic structure? So basing cryptography on minimal assumptions is a major uh, goal in cryptography 
and understanding the complexity theoretic implications of these primitives helps shed light on what the minimal assumption has to be. Again, for the with the for FHE, we know that uh, it implies hard problems in SDK. So, it has to be based on problems like uh, lattice problems which also lie in SDK. On the other hand with one way functions, uh, we can dream, we could hope to base them on NP hardness alone. Okay. Great. So, in this work uh, we try to collect evidence that structure may not actually be that necessary. So, how do we go about doing it? Let us think of the simple case that showing that one way functions do not imply hard structured problems. The best way to do this would be to do it unconditionally, which would mean something like even if p was actually equal to SDK, one way functions still exist. Unfortunately, this is too much to ask for because uh, this would in particular imply proving p not equal to NP. So, we go for the next best thing, which is we try to prove limitations on our techniques an approach which was pioneered by Impaglias and Rudich. Okay. So, let me tell you about commonly used techniques in crypto. Right. So, black box uh, constructions are very pervasive in all of crypto. Uh, in this case, let us think about how do we construct a language in NP intersect QNP using one way functions in a black box way. Right. So, a black box construction has two components. The first of our is a construction which is uh, a, a, a la language in NP intersect QNP you defined using the one way function, uh, which only uses input output access to the one way function. And additionally, we have a security proof, which says that given any adversary which breaks the language, we can use this adversary again only in an input output access uh, to invert the one way function. So, it turns out that we can rule out such reductions and in particular Rudit showed that one way functions actually do not imply hard problems in NP intersect QNP in such a black box way. Good. Right. So, what do we know about these uh, black box separations? So, when it comes to understanding the relationship between two complexity theoretic primitives, we know quite a bit. The landscape is quite well understood about how different primitives are re related to each other in a black box way. On the other hand, when it comes to the complexity theoretic implications of a cryptographic primitives, less is known. So, basically we know that one way functions do not imply hard problems in NP intersect QNP and they do not imply average case hard problems in SDK. So, we would like to understand these better. For example, does public key encryption imply hard problems in NP intersect QNP? How about IO? Does it imply hard problems in SDK? Okay. With that, we come to our results. Good. So, what do we show? So, right, at a high level, this is how the world looks like right now. There are some primitives which actually imply hard problems in NP intersect QNP and SDK, and there are one way functions which do not. So, we show that public key encryption does not imply hard problems in NP intersect QNP uh, and SDK, the same for OT. So, what we actually show is that IO along with one way functions does not imply hard problems in either of these two classes. Proving separations for IO is great because it lets us in infer the same for all the primitives which are implied by IO in a black box way. Okay. And that list keeps going. Some remarks. So, first of all, is not IO very non black box? I guess thanks Amir for giving away the punchline. It turns out that we can capture these most while IO does use most constructions in a black box non black box way, it does so in a fairly restricted manner. Most constructions first construct some primitive using the one way function in a black box way and then they obfuscate it. Ashrov and Segev give a framework of oracle aided circuits like circuits which have one way function gates which captures such constructions. And so, we also work in this model and we show that um, in this model IO cannot construct hard problems in SDK or in NP intersect QNP. Second, does IO exist? So, the nice thing for this work is it does not matter. Uh, even if IO did not exist, we have still learned something. For example, this lets us know that public key encryption does not imply hard problems in SDK 
and this holds regardless of whether I O exists or not. Okay. So, a bit more formally what do we show? So, most of these constructions of hard uh, most of these black box separations construct a special oracle world where a one of the primitives exists, but the complexity class is easy. And this lets you infer uh, that the complex primitive does not imply hard problems in the complexity class. So, in this case what we show is that there is an oracle where one way functions exist, I O for these oracle aided circuits also exists and at the same time the complexity classes S G K and N P intersect N P are easy. Okay. So, because of the lack of time um, I would not be talking about the whole thing. So, in this talk we would show that one way functions do not imply hard problems in S G K even worst case hard problems in S G K in a black box way which in particular means we would show ok good ah, sorry. So, which in particular means that we would show an oracle where one way functions exist and yet S G K is easy um, we would I would write it this over ok. So, first let me tell you about statistical zero knowledge. So, when we think about the class of statistical zero knowledge. So, when we think about zero knowledge we think about proofs a prover and a verifier and so on. Um, it turns out that statistical zero knowledge has a nice characterization in terms of complete problems. So, in this talk we will be focusing on that characterization in particular the problem statistical difference which was shown to be complete for SGK by Sahai and Vadhan. Okay. So, the input in this problem consists of a pair of circuits which define two distributions. So, given a circuit the output distribution of the circuit is what we consider when the input is a uniformly random input ok. Uh, so, the problem is we have to determine if the output distributions of these two circuits are close to each other or if they are far from each other. So, if the statistical distance between these two dist uh, circuits is uh, distributions is small less than one third we have to say no otherwise if it is more than two thirds we have to say yes note that this is a promise problem. So, in the case where this statistical distance is between two one thirds and two thirds we do not have to say anything correct ok. So, if there is a language L in SGK and some x which is an instance it gets mapped to a pair of circuits. If x is in the language it gets mapped to a pair of circuits which whose output distribution is far from each other and if x is not in the language it gets mapped to circuits which are close to one another ok. So, let us see how would a, a hard problem in S G K from one way functions look like. So, the first half of it is a construction. The construction starts with a one way function and outputs a pair of circuits these circuits again make only input output access to the one way function ok. And then the second half is a security proof which says that given any adversary which breaks S G K in particular it tells are these two circuits close to each other or far can be used to invert the one way function right. So, how do we rule this out? There, there is a very canonical recipe given by Impaglias and Rudic which says uh, first construct a oracle for the one way function construct an adversary to break S G K and finally, prove that even given this adversary that breaks S G K you cannot invert the one way function great. So, just to repeat we have to do three things design a one way function design an adversary to break S G K and show that the one way function is secure even given this adversary. So, the first half designing a one way fun per function is pretty standard we would pick a random permutation it is a great one way function on its own. The second half which is we have to design an adversary to break S G K. So, just uh, recall what the goal is we are given two circuits we have to determine if their uh, statistical distance is small or high. So, the oracle the uh, right. So, here is the first candidate what it does is it first computes the statistical distance between the two function given two circuits as input it first computes the statistical distance between them. Note that this is not really efficient it could make exponentially many queries to the one way function, but that is ok. Then if the statistical distance is less than half it says no, if it is more than half it says yes. So, what is good about this? So, what is good is that it actually breaks S G K. So, at least we are halfway there. 
Unfortunately, it turns out that this is too powerful. It actually breaks all of NP. And so it doesn't really help, so we cannot really show that the F is one way even given this oracle. So just to give you some intuition about why it breaks NP. So on any input X, here's the construction. One of the circuits is simply the verifier. It uh, takes as input a witness, runs the verifier and sees if it accepts or not. The other input is a identically zero circuit. So now, if X was not in the language, these two circuits are identical. On the other hand, if X was in the language, uh, their statistical distance is more than zero. We can actually, oh, sorry. so we can actually detect this using padding. Uh, come close to half and half and then it's possible to detect it. Okay, so we need an oracle which is somewhat less powerful than this one. Okay, so the issue with this oracle is that it is very sensitive to small changes especially around half. Okay. So our fix is that we would add noise. How do we do it? So the new uh, adversary to break SDK again first computes the statistical distance between the two circuits. Then it picks a random threshold between one thirds and two thirds. And uh, if it's less than the threshold, it says no. If, it, if the statistical distance is more than the threshold, it says yes. So what's good about this is that it still breaks SEK because to break SEK all we need to do is to be correct if it's less than one third and more than two thirds. In between we don't really care. The challenge here is that it is also still making exponentially many queries to F and so we still have to show that it's not powerful enough to actually break the one way function. Good. Right. So. This is our goal, we have to show that F is one way even given this breaker oracle, right. So the earlier bug has now been transformed into a feature that this new oracle is actually insensitive to random local changes. And it turns out that for one way functions, random local changes are sufficient to change the answer the adversary has to give. So to illustrate, consider the following, that there is a one way permutation and the challenge is this red uh, box. So the adversary has to return the position of the red box to succeed. Now we can do a random change which is pick a random place and swap these two. Now the, the answer the adversary has to give has changed completely. And yet we can show that every query the adversary makes to these, uh, every query the adversary makes to the uh, adversary, uh, uh, the, to the breaker oracle, it would receive the same answer with very high probability. And this lets us show that the adversary cannot invert the one way function even given access to this SDK oracle. So this was really quick and dirty. Look at the paper for more details. Okay, so with this uh, let me conclude. So first of all we showed that IO does not imply hard problems in SDK or NP intersect co NP in a black box way. Okay, so the concept of IO has garnered a lot of attention over the last couple of years. It's extremely powerful and its existence still remains somewhat questionable. Uh, this work interestingly does not rely on the existence of IO. Uh, a few years ago we would have written a couple of papers showing each of these results separately, but uh, due to IO we can show all of them in one shot. And secondly, uh, so this work supports a theoretical possibility that we can construct public key encryption from very unstructured assumption. Yet the reality remains quite different. Most of our constructions of public key encryption schemes are based on very structured assumptions. There has been some work which has tried to diversify the assumptions behind public key encryption, yet our success has been quite limited. Bridging this gap of constructing public key encryption from unstructured assumptions remains a major open question even today. Okay, with that, thank you.